I don't have a video yet about the Lewis structure of carbon dioxide. Carbon and oxygen are both non-metals. They come from this right-hand side of the staircase in the periodic table. So they're going to share electrons with each other. Carbon is in group 14, so it brings four valence electrons with it. Oxygen in group 16 brings six valence electrons with it. Carbon and two oxygens together make 16 total electrons that we're going to have to account for in the Lewis structure. Let's go. I'm going to put a carbon in the center and two oxygens, one on either side. Now, the way that I do Lewis structures for molecular compounds made of only nonmetals is step one, bond your central atom to the outer ones. If they weren't bonded together, you wouldn't have a molecule, right? Step two, fill the octet on your outer atoms. So this oxygen already has two electrons in its vicinity. So now give it three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's an octet. This oxygen already has two, now three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now that's already two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. That's already the 16 electrons that I'm allowed to use. There's no minus charge here, so I'm not allowed to just add more electrons in. But the octet on this carbon atom is not yet complete. The octet rule says that that carbon needs a electrons around it, and currently it only has one, two, three, four. Where are we going to get those extras? The answer is we can move two electrons from the oxygen into a double bond. So they still count towards oxygen, but now they also count towards carbon. And we'll do the same on the other side as well. Your complete, valid, and inarguable Lewis structure for carbon dioxide is carbon double bonded to two separate oxygens and each of those oxygens has two lone pairs on it as well. Congratulations, you're done. If you're here because you wanted to know about the bond angle or something, I'm just going to tell you the, the Vesper notation here is AX2, one central atom surrounded by two atoms and no lone pairs on it. That gives it a linear geometry, and so the bond angle here is exactly 180 degrees. Very nice. Thanks for being with me, and best of luck.